Welcome to Digging Deeper with Backyard Farmer. I'm Kim Todd. Together we will unearth the biggest topics in Nebraska's gardening world. Today we dive into cover crops, what they are, and why they are growing in popularity. You know, earlier this season, we talked about flooded soils and all the things that people either could or could not do with them. We want to continue to talk about how to cover those soils with something. And supposedly that is what cover crops do. So I grabbed a couple seed packets at a local garden center and I got you guys to come on air, Darren Redfern and Katja Kohler Cole, to be able to talk about both the ag side of cover crops and the urban versus ag side of cover crops. So let's start out by saying what exactly are cover crops and what are they supposed to do? Whichever one of you wants to take that question and fly with it. Okay, I'll, I'll go first. How about that? How about that? So, so what a cover crop is basically the it's in the in the name that cover crops are, are crops that that cover, uh, and what they cover is the soil, and so it's uh, they do offer some other benefits that I think we'll we'll probably get into as as we move along today, but simply what we're trying to do is is to plant something that will will cover the soil, uh, primarily to reduce erosion. What are the other benefits though? Because of course, if you're in an urban area, you know, you might not necessarily have erosion, you just might have uncovered the soil. Yeah, so the, uh, there's quite a number of different benefits. Mostly uh, on the ag side, we're interested in, in the reduction of erosion, uh, both from water and wind. So covering the soil then is, is extremely important uh, from that standpoint. Uh, cover crops also, um, improve the, the soil structure, if you will. One of the terms that you hear used quite regularly is uh, soil health. Uh, that encompasses uh, quite a number of different soil processes. Uh, some of the cover crops can contribute nitrogen into the system. Uh, wildlife habitat, they can also serve uh, as, as, as uh, components of those systems and then one of my interests is, is cover crops can also produce forage for livestock grazing. Perfect. So these little seed packets that I grabbed locally yeah. say what about cover crops and is this a good thing or a bad thing in terms of species and what people, how, how do people choose what is a right. good cover crop? Yeah, so most cover crops um, are actually just uh, regular species that can also be grown as crops. Um, the difference, I guess, between using it as a regular crop or as a cover crop would be that as a cover crop, we don't harvest it. We don't let it go to seed. Um, we just basically either let it die or kill it <laughs> and um, let it decompose in the ground right there and then. So, so give me some examples of typical cover crop crops. Yeah. And is there a difference between what we might want to use as a cover crop in the eastern part of the state as opposed to the panhandle, for example? Sure. So um, in a farm situation, one of the most common cover crops that we're using is cereal rye, hmm. um, which is a small grain, um, except we're not, as I said, we're not using it for grain. We're just, um, farmers usually spray it with glyphosate or Roundup in the spring and kill it that way, and it just stays there. And it has a lot of the benefits that Darren mentioned earlier. It improves the soil. It adds organic matter to the soil. It's, uh, it's used um, as a food source for microbes and things like that. Um, so that's a, that's a pretty good one for the eastern part of the state. Um, the further west we go, we need more um, drought tolerant species. So mm -hmm. um, probably some of the summer annual grasses, um, such as sorghum, millet, um, those may be a little bit more um, useful over there. Yeah, there are quite a quite a number in this mm -hmm. in your packet here. You've got oats and right. peas. Uh, those are, are two. Mix. I like yep. both of those. Um, we mm -hmm. actually did uh, some experiments over the last couple of years using both of those in a, in a small plot study in Lincoln at North Platte and also out in um, in Sydney. Uh, basically, what we saw is that the the biomass production or the yield was much greater here in eastern Nebraska as you would expect just because of the warmer conditions, the increased rainfall, 
Uh, one of the interesting differences that we saw in Lincoln uh, compared to uh, out in North Platte and, and Sydney was that the, uh, the pea did not compete very well with the oats. Uh, these were spring planted. Uh, oats was just super productive uh, very early and actually restricted the production of, of the peas. As we moved a little further west, uh, the peas, or the peas uh, still didn't compete as well with the oat, but you did see a little more growth out of the out of the peas. So a lot of that, you know, back to your question, you know, you can grow the same species uh, in eastern Nebraska that you can out in the western part of the state, but the expectations, especially on yield and growth, may be much, much, much different. So the other packet here, with the top torn off because it got planted, <laughs> is actually buckwheat. Yep. So another good one, and and again, if you look at these packets, and we were talking a little bit off air about a little bit pricey and what yep. the options are, mm -hmm. especially for somebody who has, you know, we use a little bit of cover crop mm -hmm. uh, in our backyard farmer garden, for example, yep. a couple of years ago. So, so talk a little bit about buckwheat or how people can actually get their hands on the right kinds of things, because just because it says cover crop, does that mean it's a good one? It, it, anything can can say cover crop because as got you indicated. Uh, most of the cover crops are actually crops that we use for a different purpose. Uh, the buckwheat is, is one that you see uh, a lot in mixes. Mm -hmm. um, oftentimes in some of the fall planted cover crop mixes, uh, especially after, after wheat production, uh, buckwheat will be a component of that. Uh, you may see it in with the, uh, in with the peas and the oats as well. Uh, all of these are, are very short season crops. Uh, I think I noticed on the seed packet that said 35 to 45 days. Yeah, uh, it, It's a very quick flowering species. From a forage standpoint, it's not very good, but as a, as a pollinator species, it's pretty darn good. Mm -hmm. So Perfect. depending on what your objectives are, it can be useful. Okay, so Katya, rather than going off to a garden center, although right. that's a great idea if you just need a little bit, I right. assume, what are the other where else could people find cover crops? Yeah, so there are actually a lot of um, seed dealers that are even specializing in cover crops, so you can find them online and they'll usually sell it by the pound and you can, some of them have, um, well, little programs that where you can actually mix together your own cover crops. You can enter in um, what your main object objectives are, when are you growing it, and so it'll give you a mix and it's it's typically less expensive. You'll you'll get a little larger amount and you have to pay for shipping, of course. But of course, but yeah, still a yeah, little bit more. So, yeah. so so if you read about this or you know, just randomly start reading about cover crops, an awful lot of people say, well, they're all legumes. Not so, right? That that is you are <laughs> correct. Um, the the pea that's in the oat and pea mix is yeah. a legume. Uh, the legumes are, are planted uh, from a forage standpoint because they have a little higher quality, so they add a, a little more uh, nutrition, if you will, to the to the uh, oat mix. What, what they're used for a lot in cover crop systems is then to um, is to provide nitrogen to the soil because they can fix their fix their own nitrogen. Right. Uh, that's a pretty complex process. They've got to have uh, rhizobia. Uh, which is a bacteria that infects the root hair as it goes through this little process. That takes some time uh, for that process to become in motion. Okay. Uh, but, you know, uh, again, earlier we said these were pretty short season crops, so the contribution from nitrogen from these a lot of times is, is not as great as you read, although they can still offer some other benefits. Uh, the pea, for example, can flower and provide some some sort of service then to some of the some of the pollinator species. Okay, so so it's a little bit of a mixed bag. So so is there a right time to plant cover crops? Because again, the buckwheat says frost sensitive. Right. So here we are hopefully past the last snowstorm since it's in the nineties or something like that. It, do, do, do they have to be planted early in the spring? Can you plant them all season long? What about the fall? Yeah, um, it kind of, again, de depends on um, what you want to do with them. Typically, we plant it either after, so we plant it between two main crops. Mm -hmm. So in a, in a 
in a horticultural um, situation, for example, a backyard where you may um, you may have a, a spring crop of broccoli or something, for example. So what maybe starting at the end of June or so you have you have nothing growing there. You could mm -hmm. plant a cover crop to improve your soil. Um, and since you're still planting in the summer when things are really growing, you have a lot of options. So buckwheat would be one of them. You could add some peas. Um, you could add some grasses into the mix um, if you want to do a mix. Um, so anything that will grow fast. Um, the other option would be um, if you, for example, want to plant some cover crops before tomatoes or something like that, um, you could plant them very early in the spring and do a cool season one, such as a mustard or other brassicas. Okay, so, so then you let it die or kill it off, right? And ideally you let it die or you kill it with something yeah. that is not going to hurt anything else, yeah. right? What happens if you don't kill it? Yeah. What, what happens if you uh, so, try so to plant it? <laughs> so uh, let me back up, back up just a little bit. So, so one of the things that, that we like with the fall planted uh, cover crops, that, that this will cover both of those situations a little bit. So uh, these that are, are not winter hardy, the oats would be one that has no cold tolerance. Uh, so you can plant it uh, probably as early as, as August 1st. It'll continue mm -hmm. to grow till frost. Occasionally we'll see it produce a, a little grain during the fall. Oftentimes we don't. Um, <clears throat> so with the, with the oat, then planted the frost kills it makes a little mat and kind of controls the weed the rye that katya mentioned earlier uh, typically planted a little later uh, it has quite a bit of winter hardiness uh, so it will survive the winter begin growth in the spring so um you can still see some of those plants around in, in some of the fields locally um, most of that is going to be planted to corn okay so the corn seedlings are, are not very competitive with the rye at that point, so it's going to be necessary to come in and terminate those with ground up <laughs> so that we can plant corn in them. So, you know, it, 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 my standpoint from the forage, we're going to let them grow and then we're going to utilize them then with grazing, which in effect is another form of termination. So you've got winter kill, grazing, and then you've got herbicide as a, as a mechanism for termination. Mm -hmm. All right. So I want to remind those of you watching us on Facebook, give us a little comment. We want to make sure that we are giving you what you want to hear as we're digging deeper because of course on Backyard Farmer we have about three minutes to touch every single subject. All right. So we know we kind of need to kill and then do we till or do we plant right into the cover crop? And again thinking mm -hmm. obviously in a, in, a, in a big acreage yeah. or acres situation mm -hmm. you till. How about the garden? Well, actually, I, a lot of Nebraska farmers that are using cover crops are not tilling anymore, mm -hmm. but they do have special equipment that lets them plant right into all of that residue that's going to be mm -hmm. on top of the soil, which most people don't have in a garden. Right. So in the garden, um, you may think about maybe you want to either just use a cover crop that you know kills in the fall that has mm -hmm. time to decompose over winter and into early spring, so you don't have all that residue. Um, or if you have a spring cover crop, um, yeah, you're going to have to kill it somehow. Um, you could mow it. Yeah. You could, you know, till it. Um, Just those are your options. Out of the way. All right. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Excellent. Yeah. Okay. So, in the gardening world, or even in ag, we rotate crops for mm -hmm. really good reason. Mm -hmm. If is there is there such a thing as planting cover crops? too frequently or do you need to rotate the cover crop? That's a really good question. That is a good question. Yeah. That sounds like a we, research question. It is a research question. Yes. Man, you, 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 so yeah. I don't know that we, we know the answer to that. I think a lot of times the, the tendency is just to depend on rotating the main crop. Mm -hmm. uh, oftentimes uh, you see, uh, uh, at least on some of these larger scales, mm -hmm. producers will stick with something they're pretty comfortable with. Uh, Diverse mixes are, are pretty common. Um, there's no way to really mimic that from year to year just because of the diversity of species. Some will be more productive one year than the next, even though they may be the same ones in the mix. Uh, sometimes they don't perform and so they'll be pulled out. So the, the diverse mixes offer 
some options there. So I, I don't know that it's really necessary to rotate the species of cover crops, if you will. Uh, one of the one of the the research questions I think that some are looking at from the row crops is can you grow continuous soybean and use cover crops as the rotation crop? Interesting. So yeah, there's so, a lot of ways to approach it. Okay. So what what about total sand? Since we have a lot of all there's left mm -hmm. is sand. Cover crops make a difference. Mm -hmm. Are you doing any trial or error on that or research? I, it's that's been a been a question since since mid March. Yeah, about what to do with with the with the sand. Um, I really don't have a good answer for that. I I, I do think uh, some sort of dune stabilization is is going to be important. Um, mm -hmm. I suspect that with a lot of those dunes that have washed in, there's going to be some plants that are going to try to grow mm -hmm. out of there that are. Hopefully not, not invasive. necessarily. Right. Right. See, that's yeah. the that's the yeah. thing. You yeah. don't really yeah. know what you what you're gonna have there. Yeah. Uh, some of the I, I do think at some point cover crops may be used uh, as some kind of remediation mm -hmm. crop on that. Um, you know, I think there's some areas that, that are just gonna be not. Uh, it's not gonna be uh, cost effective to remove a lot of that sand. Uh, some of that will probably be planted to more more permanent. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. perennial so, grass. So we mentioned the word uh, research and there's a little rumor that there's some sort of a hoofed animal, perhaps a cow beastie of some sort wandering around on cover crops on East Campus. That would be me. <laughs> so you knew that, right? Yes, I did. Yeah, so I want to know, I mean, so we've got a got a, a small project over on East Campus. We've got a couple of different uh, crop rotations in there. One of those crop rotations includes oat following wheat. Mm -hmm. And so we plant that oat crop uh, mid-August, uh, allow it to grow, winter kill, and then we graze it over winter, uh, similar as the same time that we do the, uh, the corn residue. Uh, so we're just beginning this. We just finished our, our first year of, of data collection on that and have just got the corn. I don't think we planted soybean yet. We've just got the corn planted into some of that. So one of the things that we're looking at uh, primarily are the effects of, of cattle grazing on crop production and then can some of that be mitigated through the use of cover crops. All right. Any parting thoughts from either one of you other than go forth and and have fun. <laughs> have fun. Think I mean, about you know, that's, you that's, that's kind yeah. of the big yeah. thing. You know, there, there's so many choices for cover mm -hmm. crops. You know, you're not really um, a lot of times they're not really managed under ideal conditions because right. we're just looking for the seed mm -hmm. to germinate and, and accumulate some level of growth mm -hmm. uh, so that we can control weeds, uh, provide a little nitrogen, uh, put some kind of structure back in the soil. Right. One thing that I would probably caution people is to make sure your cover crops don't become a weed, mm -hmm. especially if you let them go to seed. I mean, a lot of them can be used and should be used uh, for pollinators, but the, the danger is if they go to seed, you know, they can start right. spreading yeah. and become a real problem. That's this so. one here. Okay. All right. Well, thanks, guys. I think it, this was probably really interesting oh, for our so. audience yep. and certainly Thank for you. me. Certainly enjoyed being here. Good. Yep. You know, and that is all the time we have for Digging Deeper with Backyard Farmer. You can watch a new Digging Deeper on Facebook every Sunday night at 6.30 p.m. Central. Do not miss Backyard Farmer Live every Thursday at 7 p.m. Central on NET. Thanks for Digging Deeper with Backyard Farmer.